my friends, I'm Rick and this is your seat at the table and over here in the corner is little Missy. She's quite, currently being a little quieter and in the last video she was pretty uh, pretty vocal. So anyhow, we are looking at the beginning of cycle 16. Uh, I'm running behind a little bit in posting these things, but uh, uh, some of, these, uh, some of this uh, uh, game not travel stuff, it takes a little bit of time to do and there's more time of stuff that uh, you may not, that I don't record. So like when I'm updating my exchange and I'm going through all the, the math and stuff like that, I mean, <clears throat> I could bog down another 30, 40 minutes uh, doing that, by, but after it becomes repetitive after a while. So it, it, I don't see the value of doing a video on it constantly. Eventually, you know, each, each cycle, each, of role brings up new possibilities and new things and there are so many things that have yet to be touched on or explored or to uh, be uh, highlighted in this would-be game system that uh, that's kind of in part why we continue this uh, this whatever the hell you want to call this uh, stream I mean you know right it's not like it's uh, extremely popular I did get a hit on the one that the one posted before last uh, so something in the tags or something in the algorithm tripped uh, YouTube, and I've got hundreds of hundreds of views on that one, which is hey, you know, it's all good. I'm also grateful for all the new subscribers, the guys you guys have joined up for the channel. We are looking at uh, uh, just sh one short of 800 uh, subscribers, which is just wow. You know, it's been pretty steady. It's one to two people a week. Two or three people a week, I think. Uh, so the growth has been uh, fairly, fairly steady. So you know, uh, yeah, there we go. And uh, it's always a good thing, right? Uh, I have picked up a second person on my uh, uh, buy me a cup of coffee site uh, that's uh, actually going to you know kick me a couple dollars every month. Uh, I'm you know, staggered that anybody would even try to do that. I mean, I really appreciate it. It's uh, every little bit adds up, right? Uh, the one fellow donates 50 bucks here and 50 bucks there kind of thing, and or 25 bucks here and 25 bucks there, whatever. A very generous person. And uh, the other one's an actual member. So $3 a month, right? And if I had uh, 100, 100 subscribers paying me $3 a month, well, man, that would... Uh, well, that would pay for my internet to let me get me a new laptop. <laughs> I'm just, yes, no, I mean, it is what it is. The uh, weeks come and go. I mean, my work truck, just now getting jobs caught up from that when it was gone, the truck was out of commission for almost a week. Or it was eight days, eight freaking days, and then half of a day, a day later, a half of a day for something else. And uh, so here we are almost almost a month later and we're just now getting things caught up and uh, the trucks developed another problem this one's going to be a bit more pricey and uh it's uh, the clutch is slipping i don't know what else to say it the the fourth gear will pop out as you if you slow down and like are you slowing down to turn uh, or something and it, it just disengages itself and it's and it's starting to do that it's done that a couple times over the summer and uh, started way back in the early spring doing it as far as I back as I can remember but I didn't think nothing of it at the time it just came because maybe I bumped it or I just didn't get it seated all the way but this last week it's popped out three four times a day on average just I sit there and I hold the gear back the, the shift back it stays engaged and not a problem so I brought that up to my boss he's now going to do some uh, research on what and how and exactly where we're going to have to go with it and uh, the it could be a five six thousand dollar repair if it's just the clutch plate if it's just the clutch plate if it's uh, there's gearboxes the, the gearbox is having issues or that could get a bit more pricey it's part of the doing business uh, according to the international the people manufacture the vehicle the life expectancy of your gear of your clutch is 120 to 200,000 miles and the truck has just short just coming up on 300,000 miles on it so uh, if you see the original components then they will well past their stage and they and um, I've told the boss even when we bought the truck I was suspect I suspect that it's over it carries too much weight for its drivetrain 
it, it should have a second axle. We know that for a fact because it's not legal in Iowa to actually drive the damn thing. It, it cost us a $700 fine a couple years ago when I went across the scale and the truck wasn't even fully loaded. That's the, that's the BS part. You only hold about half a tank of stuff and, and then you hit that road limit on what you're supposed to have on an axle. And so we should have a dummy axle or a tag axle underneath the truck, and, and that would cost about ten grand to have one put in. So uh, the boss has been uh, reluctant to do that. It's cheaper to pay fines because they don't come up, we don't get them very often. But so it's cheaper for him to pay the fines. The, the suck part is the fines go on my damn driver's record. I've checked. Right. Anyhow, the, so if that if that at some point in the near future the truck's got to go back to the shop, and it's probably going to be a week or two weeks which is going to really suck for me financially. You know, like I said, last uh, last week we got hit with a, a water bill that was three times usual size. And uh, we managed to pay it, but that's because I was working a slew of overtime. And uh, so this just the week we just finished, about 40, 43. So I went from 50, 50 and 57, 57 and 53 hours, and now I'm 43. And next week it may be 50. If the, Unless we do something else up and some crops up or whatever. Anyway, I'm not here for that. I'm stalling, aren't I? I'm stalling here. So in this case, like I said, I'm really grateful that uh, you guys are stuck along with me. New people come along. Uh, that's great. Channel's doing real well. Uh, of course, like I said, it's never been about money. I'm never going to make any money off this stuff. Not unless, not unless I'd figure out some other way to beat the algorithm. That's not going to happen. So anyway, we are looking at uh, first things first. We want uh, population growth for the planet, and uh, we do a one D. So I'm on a D four because it's one two. It's a one one D three. So we, we ignore the four. So I rolled a one. And that's an addition to a base. And this calculator is about shot. Let's see. So we've got a base 0 0.01 plus 0 0.008. 0 0.008 or 0.018. Again, you know, I should just say that. And then take that times the current population of 11,543. 1,543 equals, well that's not right, divide it by that dumbass. Sometimes the math part just, you know, I guarantee you if math is not your forte, this game system will, will help you keep that high. You will get better at it or you will not play it. Zero, one, eight, times 11, five, 43 percent. Oh, oh, you're giving me, you're killing me. Yeah, that's right, 11,000. It would help if I remember what the hell I'm doing, point zero on eight equals. That's better, 207, so we're adding an additional 207, which, so, I think it was the first number I had, there's, there, what you can't see is there's stuff on here that won't come off, and I, I really should probably wipe it off, but I'm not keen on doing that. <laughs> I'm afraid of making the damn thing worse, to be honest. And we got it at a dollar, uh, I think this came out of a garage sale, for, we need to find another cheapo and just throw it away. I think a cat threw up on it. That's what I think. So that brings us to 11,750 population. And how does that make a bloody difference? Well, it, it doesn't in the scale at the early on, except for certain things. And tax the tax uh, uh, modifier uh, is also one of those things. 
and so I'm going to generate a couple credits off of the, er, er, the increase of the population grows. But more importantly, the, the idea is that the population hits certain levels and it opens up the, uh, the opportunity to expand your military, expand your defense force, your protection service, to exploit things that you might not be able to exploit with a lesser population. That's, that's actually ingrained and built into the system uh, on purpose. Okay, so we took care of that. Now that brings us to the event roles and we want event role planetary event role and let me see if I can find do my mess of stuff and yeah another cat once again thrown up on this one but uh, it's still usable Ew, page 30 page 30 right So planetary event roll, so we're going to figure out which one of the charts we're using. And 29 would be chart chart 1, so 30. Alright, so event roll is 30. Local society. So local society or association approaches House Lord with the request for support to establish a park or a nature reserve or other such natural public space for the planet. Group is willing to foot the credit cost of such an endeavor. Players note, group does not have its own uh, name on the planet as the House Lord has... Wait a minute, what does that seem? Okay. Players note. Group does not have to be on the same planet as the House Lord to holo him for an audience. Okay, so basically at the end of the day, local society offers to fund a park or a natural reserve or whatever. So we want something along them lines and uh, That, so that's something we will actually have to go into uh, and do a little video on separate because I'll need to go in and look up the section on improvements because there's our, our builds and our uh, uh, non-house builds that can be like this can be achieved and what the benefits are for the house. As some, some of these will create uh, uh, tourist traps which increase the amount of people who disembark from cruise liners for example, uh, people who, who are uh, moving to your planet and also would increase the uh, the tax base uh, for the planet so I mean you know another thing would be uh, certain certain builds for example a park uh, a park build for it would increase the uh, social or uh, uh, satisfaction the, the population satisfaction levels uh, that is not something that I have uh, been calculating at this point because uh, like I said the sheer amount of depth that that's available for a for this game, uh, allow uh, kind of needs that means you kind of need to moderate or meteor uh, meteor what is what you want and what you don't want. If you really have a lot of time and don't care just how much you know you really love the level of detail, then the detail is available. It's the the wells are very deep here and it's just a, uh, limited by what you're willing to pursue. So, so and we get our first ship traffic roll. So we're going to move on to page. 51 ship traffic I always take with a, with a tongue in cheek because sometimes you get some good stuff and sometimes you're like oh no and some things you're like I don't want anything to do with that yeah so we're going to see which one of the charts we're going to be 65 so we're going to be on the guild traffic chart get to find that chart Traffic chart, okay. And 33. We're on the we're on the threes, the 30s the, today for rolls. Uh, 33 is nothing, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just less paperwork to do. Wait till you get four or five of these things to roll just for one planet. 
where you've got 10 planets with 10 different colonized worlds that you're keeping track of and you're rolling you're rolling event rolls for every one of them and you're rolling ship traffic rolls for every one of them blah blah blah, blah. so let's see 21 which would be on chart one the regular merchant traffic roll and <clears throat> we'll go into this and geez like i said we are it's stuck on 30s today i just keep coming up with threes so let's see 30 is a class two scout owned by blank guild okay so we have something here 30 so a class two so that's going to be a tech two haul that's going to be a uh 299 ton uh in a warship category that would be a sloop it would be a uh a medium freighter i think in the cargo capacity role uh in scout cap this would be a heavy scout or a long range scout depending on uh, how you look at it and it's uh, uh so the purpose there uh, as opposed to a, a long race scout versus a a sloop which is a warship the uh, the, the sloop is or is to, going to have a more wider range of weapons versus uh defenses where the uh and moderate speed and maneuverability where the uh long range scout is going to be focused on uh, a long jump capacity so they're going to have larger jump drives or navi computers or uh, duplicates so they can double jump uh, if necessary uh, uh, they would also carry uh, additional life support so they're going to go uh, letter lesser on the weapon systems the naval weapons are going to be very very lightweight or non-existent at all as opposed to a sloop having uh, some lightweight uh, medium weight uh, naval weapons on board which also detracts from its ability to have a uh, you know, decent or uh, extreme speed and range anyway so a uh, class 2 scout from a blank uh, guild so the blank means the blank means one and a number of things uh, you can do an investigation and just uh, try to randomly decide what guild this comes to. You can create one from scratch to have a brand new guild that you've never heard of before. And uh, keeping in mind, guilds generally are major galactic corporations or regional galactic corporations. Uh, you know, so that's the terminology there. Uh, or you could uh, just assign it. So in this case, I already have one or two guilds that I'm familiar with. And perhaps I would just for expedite, you know, just to expedite things, I will just automatically say it belongs to uh, ABC uh, ABC uh, uh, Construction or whatever, and and, and call it a day. And so in this case, though, it has a a second uh, drop down chart, if you will. A uh, if this was all computerized, this would be how this would work. This would be this sort of thing where you would go in and basically uh, multiple choice. You're, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of options available, and each one ne necessarily brings up its own damn chart. So in your event roll, for example, or in this case the ship traffic roll, the computer rolls it up, and this is the thing that pops up, and then a drop-down menu pops up, and it rolls a second time, and it automatically gives you your results, but it's gone down several trees to do it in order to expand the options. So not only you know does the ship traffic roll decide that we're having a class two scout, the the, the additional additional of more detail to it gives us a bit more information so in this case there's five, there is one two three four categories and one of them is the scout has been assigned to the local uh, guild regional office if none simply uh, on R&R &R and leaves on the next cycle so if you have a guild that's established a guild office on your planet, then this scout would be assigned to that guild office, which then would mean that the scout would be working a region in, in and around your house. And potentially, that's opportunity for you as a player, because this is a free, a free tool that you can use to explore your area with to no cost to yourself. You still operate it like it's your ship because when the supplies get low, it returns to the planet, uh, your nearest supply base or whatever, and restocks. And either the house restocks it for free or they buy it. So, I mean, that's how, however you want to play it out. But it just gives you an extra opportunity. And anything that they find, because they're within operating within the house region you can, that the house claims, they have to approach the house first, and the house gets dibs on anything that's found. I, 
and I, you know, ideally that's how that works. Now, if you want to go to the level of negotiations and, and operational uh, uh, roles and things like this to determine, uh, you know, randomly what the captains and the, the scout captains are going to do and what the guild lord's going to do, then, uh, hey, you're, you're the game once again is that deep. The, the rabbit hole is quite a, quite a warren. You can go down many holes and, and can never come up the same hole twice. And that was in part one of the, the, the things that I tried to get. So like I said, if it's been assigned to the local office, otherwise it's just visiting. The next option is re it reports on having found a planet in the blank star system. Roll for an unexplored system. So the, right off the bat, <coughs> it's coming with free information for the house. Number three, the captain reports a pirate activity in the blank system. So once again, it's reporting to the house that there's pirate activity going on, and here's the and you just determine what system it is, uh, either by uh, I don't know hunt and peck, roll it up, just pick one, pick one you haven't explored yet, one you have explored yet, one because some of these places we've already explored, uh, we have hints and things that things might be going on there in that system or on a planet in that system. This just would make that more tied together if we choose that's just we're back to how you choose to play it and then uh, the next one uh, the last one here is suffered damage and needs repairs roll for the number of damaged components these percentage of damages and the percentage of damage suffered by the hull so if if a ship suffers internal damages generally speaking if something's either attacked it and damaged it which means it's damaged the hull too or it's had an internal explosion of some sort which has also damaged the hull so you're always going to have to roll a percentage. So for example, if that was the case, and I rolled 83, 83% of that damn ship's hull is damaged, which means it's, it's brutal. It's barely, it's surprise is functioning at all. And the, it would almost be cheaper for the guild to just build a brand new ship or to scrap this one and, you know, because, but you can, once again, we can rebuild it. It can be rebuilt. Uh, so, all right, let's determine which one of the roles for the subcategory is. So, a four. And four, of course, is, uh, all right, so no, the first option. Uh, so, just visiting on R&R. &R. Since we have no uh, GRO present. Which is fine. So that basically we're going to sell a few credits worth of supplies to the ship. Uh, in theory, once again, I could have one of my uh, my house uh, my ministers, uh, maybe maybe my minister of affairs or my minister of, of commerce and labor approach the, ship, the the scout captain and and ask him you know questions about the neighboring. Where was their last system? Where were they at exploring? Uh, is that you know would that information be available to the house if 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 you know, can we purchase that information? I mean, it's just about uh, the the uh, the line of progression is endless because it's only you know, slowed down by your what you want to do and what, what you're trying to achieve. So anyway, we got all of that. Let me update this a hair, and then I'll stick this back in the protective sleeve. Missy getting real quiet over there. Is you being a good kitty? Is you being a good kitty? Yeah, I see you. You're being a good kitty. She's just she all for a stray. She is so she is so friendly. I'm not saying she doesn't have some wild tendencies because she does. Her biggest her biggest quip, and I think I've said this before, is it when she's she's so excited to have the company. So when you go to leave the room. Uh, she, it's that's when she's likely she's bit my leg she's she's bit my wife's leg twice and I mean bite you hard and it's it's she I don't think she realizes just how much she's she's doing All right. anyway so that's that was the, my uh, planetary events so we move on to the next section and that would be uh, my two mining ships and they unloaded and refueled so they are ready to go to uh, out and to do some more mining which we definitely want to do I'm gonna make sure I got this stuff written down before I erase anything 
better, better safe than sorry. That's uh, stuff I've learned the hard way in a lot of things. It makes me that the older I get, the more of a pessimist I become. I mean, geez. You know, and I apologize because I do ramble on, I do bitch, and I, I do moan, and I do complain uh, sometimes endlessly in these videos when I really, really shouldn't. I mean, what do you guys give a damn? I mean, you know, I tell you, it's because this is my this is my chance to offer to talk to people. You know, sucks to be me sometimes. I say that about a lot of people, a lot of stuff. I, I deal with, I don't want to call it depression, but isolationism. Uh, I feel like I, I don't do well in crowds, and so I, I tend to withdraw, and I withdraw, and I withdraw. And then at some point, uh, I, I've withdrawn to the point where, you know, it becomes detrimental to me. And then I, then I start to re-engage, and then I feel like a total moron because... I'm, I'm so out of the loop and I don't know what to do or what where to go etc etc so anyway this system's a hundred percent explored but do I have any moons or anything in this system that have not yeah see I could go there and mine but I don't really want to go there how do I not have Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh, why does it feel like I'm missing something? What am I missing? That's a fair one. One MR. Oh, okay, I understand why, so. So where's the grassland? Oh, there, it's missing. I'm just, it's here. I'm just not seeing it. Alright, it's not a fair way. And that, or it's gotten out of out of sequence because sometimes that can happen to me. <coughs> so there that's the moon. Where the hell does the swamp planet go? Is that it? No, because that's a different that's a different freaking planet altogether or a different planet altogether. So somehow I've gotten something out of sequence and I'm done I'm done fiddling with it. I will figure out how where the hell the uh, hot swamp planet has moved to because it should be here. It should be here. Alright, alright, so there's our maps. I don't want those. And I'm not I don't want to explore a system This one I do want to go. I want to, so I'm going to bring Silver Hunter forward. Alright, so Silver Hunter, we're going to jump into this system. And we're going to explore the asteroid belt. Because we know there's an asteroid belt here in the system. Uh, our sloop discovered that. Uh, the, so we're going to move Silver Hunter to GG fourteen O zero seven N and it's an unnamed system to the asteroid belt that's displayed there by that dotted ring that's sitting there and then we're going to do a little bit of asteroid research all right so and I'm pretty sure it's up front here pretty close to the front somewhere and of course I'll be wrong because it'll be somewhere else all right exploring each shade number of minutes pressure points unbreathable Parents, asteroids, asteroid fields. 
So, rather call the field belt or debris field. Asteroids are planets, blah, 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 blah. So, if entering or flying during combat, a ship's captain and or pilot needs some successful uh, reaction rolls to, on each combat round to avoid taking damage while operating in the asteroid field. Uh, we don't care about that part. Where is... Then there's uh, mining operations of, for operating a mining uh, operation within an asteroid belt. No, wait, no, no, that's something else. That's for time a new mining concern starts up or whenever a mining ship platform or texture mine opens up a new mining location, make a roll. So, and then you have to be, you have to be circumstantial. So some of this stuff would not make sense if you were, uh, if you rolled it and you were doing for an asteroid belt or asteroid uh, field. So, uh, all right. Oh, for Pete's sake. Where is mineral resource chart? Yes. How? And types. Mining types, real place. Yeah, that's just. Oh, come on. You gotta be one of them mornings, man. It's like arriving in a known uh, solar system. So, by rights, by having my jump ship jump into the system, I can make a roll on this chart. And, uh, you know, just just for fun, let's just go ahead and roll on this chart. Just see what we get. See if we get any funky. So I roll a 65. 65 is nothing. Right? So some of the things, for example, very very nasty one would be a bug attack. Think uh, uh, Starship Troopers, right? Uh, they are another one's disabled merchant uh, ship calling for help, and it's a 25% chance or less that it's a pirate or shipjackers. Uh, trying to sucker you in. Uh, meteor shower damages your ship. Uh, roll once on the ship traffic chart. Roll twice on the ship traffic chart. Roll once on the pirate chart. Uh, once on a cult chart. Odd cosmic event occurs. Thing like a radiation belt's discovered. Distant pulsar makes the uh, next uh, whatever tachyon wave. Uh, plasma storm. You know, errant signal picked up. Blah blah blah. So there's a number of possible things. That can crop up if if you want to go and do that. It's like exploring a known solar system. So you're entering a new system and you choose to go to a brand new 10% slice. Then you would roll on this here as opposed to rolling on this other chart over here. But that's not what I was trying to find. What I'm trying to find is the amount of mineral resources uh, on asteroid belt. And I I know what my answer is supposed to be in my head, but I want to make sure that I'm done totally out of sync with what I think because like I said sometimes keeping track of a million odd different freaking rule sets and crap that I've learned over my lifetime is impossible and sometimes stuff blends together and sometimes things just disappear and when you don't use things for on a regular basis it's just like eyeglasses my eyes are tired a lot lately they're they feel strained more I think I think my prescriptions way out of whack I have an appointment on Mon uh, tomorrow on Monday to go to the eye doctor to uh, get my yearly eye test for uh, my diabetes anyway and they're supposed to uh, check my, or my prescriptions so I can get some new glasses set up so it really is playing havoc with my eyes right now uh, let's see Asteroids, yeah. assault, assault, asteroid fields and belts, page 12. Well, that's where I'm at. Oh, gee, it's right in my face, right there. Asteroid fields, unless otherwise known, to have a D, D10 plus 4. So, a silver humber comes into the asteroid belt, and we're going to roll one dice. That's a 9. 9 plus 4 is 13 rolls. So, uh, the MR is going to be... 13. So we're going to roll 13 times on the mineral resources chart. And generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, and I think I say this in here somewhere in, in the rule set, I recommend that when you roll uh, on the the MR chart, which is on this this page here, this chart here, the uh, if you get the same result, just double down on it. 
So if I if I roll up lead or PB on the periodic on the uh, uh, on the uh, Elemental chart L is lead, so PB. Uh, if I roll that once and then I roll a second time, it's just going to be PB times two, which means that when I when my mining ship is mining, it's mining double amounts. So that means there's twice as much of this particular mineral present as the other stuff that's rolled. Hmm. So. Now, on an interesting note, uh, and I had a debate years ago uh, about, well, there should be trace metals of everything, just about everything. It's just like, well, how can there be uh, carguberium if that doesn't exist? It's not on the chart. Well, dude, things the charts are periodically updated to add new stuff. We discover new things. So we create new things, new elements. And when we're confirmed that we can create them or that they actually exist and they can be proven to exist, then they get added to the chart, which means that you know there are a lot of conditions on which our world operates that are different in other worlds and in space. So the possibilities of finding exotic uh, uh, elements or, uh, of rare combinations of exotic elements are endless. I mean, so there's a reason why there's open blanks left to, for the player, for you, to come up with some crazy stuff. You know, what, what was that one that they used in Avatar? I mean, you know, uh, whatever it was, because it's going to save the universe or something cause it has a power source. I mean, that's just the possibility. So in this case, we're just going to start rolling on these and get done with it. So 87 is Tiberium or TB. And 56, nickel, a couple of decent sized asteroid belts, and you might never have to mine anything else. That's that's the truth. Uh, chlorine, 62, and some people will go, well, how's, how is it possible? That that's not that's an element that's manufactured. That's an element that 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 can't exist in a vacuum blah 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 okay well I'll, I'll challenge you in another in the same argument I said before the fact of the matter is as we know physics today in our planet is how things are functioning in our minds so the amount of materials that we have on our on our uh, uh, charts are not the end all to beat all because once again we discover new stuff we encounter new stuff we find ways to manufacture new stuff that's true but the sheer scale of the cosmic laboratory that is the that is the universe that is the quite feasible, if not actually uh, uh, be more like more than likely than less, that every possible combination thereof exists out there somewhere, and it's been naturally formed in some manner, and uh, that that you can make an argument that this can never be manufactured or, or never naturally formed. Well, that's not that's that's only based on what we know of how things can be functioned. But if a specific environment is, you know, all the all the ducks are in a row, it can happen. And statistically speaking, it actually does happen. I mean, I'm quite confident. It's just like saying, do, do, do aliens exist? Well, hell yeah, they exist. Statistically speaking, it's impossible that they don't. The argument can be very easily defined that uh, that by the sheer numbers of, of systems and, and star systems and galaxies in just the Milky Way alone. It's guaranteed that we have three to a, three or four at the minimum intelligence life out there that's mimicking our own. And how much more of it, you know? And if you add into the the planar travel uh, or dimensional uh, line of theology that's going on, you know, theory that's going on today. It's yeah, the just no. It's gonna happen no matter how you look at it. So, let's see, 45, and I and I don't have to see them to believe that they're there. Now, are they here and visiting us? Now that that's a how that's a completely different thing. You know, that's a that's a big difference. And, I, and one of the premise for my game is that uh, I said uh, at the very beginning that humanity is the apex. Of, techno of the technological societies currently known in the in the in the galaxy, and as the humanity knows it, there there are some historical uh, ruins that have been discovered that suggest maybe the, there were press you know other races and, and species who did have their day in the in the sun back in or you know, under the stars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. For one reason or another, they're not here or they've moved on. So in the current crop of things, there the galaxy is full of aliens, full of alien genomes. 
some quite exotic things that qualify as uh, intelligent life and may not qualify as intelligent life and that's all about a uh, comes down to a moral ethical and social uh, debate amongst humanity as, as to how we want to classify something regardless what the something itself might want or think because uh, that's how humans do stuff so that being said humanity gets out into space and is the top dog when it comes to technology and uh, what are we going to do we're going to exploit everything we find because that's it's also human nature, you know, is what it is. So, and when they can't they can't find them, we build them ourselves. And we're playing with stuff like that today on a on a on a on a tiny scale. And it just, oof, right? All right. So eighty four and a. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see how, how one asteroid build, one or two asteroid fields can be very valuable because so if the, when the chance comes that I can either manufacture or purchase a mining package, I will build a mining platform uh, for, an, for this asteroid field. I will set up a permanent mining uh, presence and if it really is possible, if the scenario real, really allows for it, I'll, I'll set up an actual mining facility on an asteroid in the belt and to go from there because the, the sheer amount of production that's going to be produced by this thing is, is, is enormous. And so just a, a class one freighter on a, on, a, uh, on a jump loop, we set up a cargo run which means that I now have a ship devoted for just moving this amount of cargo between this system and this system, between this, this asteroid uh, belt and my capital. And at that point, I don't care. I, I'm just going to plug the ship into the build as a component and never touch it again unless some pirate roll comes up or something and I have to determine you know, what ship was attacked and was this one of them kind of thing. And, and at that point, if I have a ship that has a 100 ton capacity for cargo, the rules for shuttle for this operation is 50-50. So every cycle I can shift 50 tons of materials this way and 50 tons of material that way. And, and so we, we allow ourselves to keep the, the, the mining operation replenished with consumables you know, food, fuel, water, oxygen, and whatever else is needed. And, and then we're able to bring 50 tons of material every cycle to the planet. And then how that then progresses for simplistic purposes, we then take the, the amount that's, that's, that's mined and we, we, uh, we quantify it. So it, uh, we average it. So in the case of a mining platform, it gets 1D per, 1D10 per cycle. So it's going to, on average, produce five tons of every one of these materials every cycle. And if that's true, and that five tons comes up to 50 tons of cargo capacity, I can just automatically add five ton production of each and one of those items to my primary exchange on the capital and not have to worry about all uh, constantly adding at new stuff every cycle. It just expedite stuff and you're just getting a, 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 you know additional production or automatically arriving at the capital where your industry can make use of it so it's an option it's one of several options available for dealing for dealing with that sort of stuff so you know let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine, nine four more 36 36 is iron Truth is, I'm surprised I haven't had at least one repeat. I don't know, statistically, the odds are in my favor of having at least one double on here. But it doesn't appear so far. It's not, uh, yeah, so far we are on, which is great, because there's at least three items here that I don't have a demand for at all on, on a, fair rent, a fair wind, and so that would just increase my tax revenue from the exchange every cycle. I just hit the it hits a sweet spot for the return on the investment shit, and then of course uh, the stockpile uh, stockpile it up in the warehouse until I hit the max, and then uh, at that point you shut the production line down over here because you can't take any more and ship it over there unless you want to ship it somewhere else and uh and, and then you wait for the big cargo ship to show up and then you just you know they buys it this it's like hitting the lottery bang and now there's some advantages here uh once again we're going down another rabbit hole when it comes to the the merchant side of stuff so if i have a 
a mining platform established on uh, in this asteroid belt. And it's producing 50 tons co combined, 50 tons of, of, of every one of these resources. Uh, and they're delivering it to my planet. And I have already established that there's a ship to do this. And so I don't have to worry. It's just not, everything's automated at this point. And uh, so uh, what I can also though do is in the process of building the mining platform. The platform itself is built upon a Tech One Hall frame. So the difference is it doesn't have a navi computer, or jump uh, jump drives, or star uh, sublight drives. It doesn't need any of them. And it has one sublight drive for maneuvering, uh, anchoring in position uh, in the asteroid belt itself, uh, and it provides power, but. There's, so all that extra space is freed up for other things, including uh, maybe expanded crew quarters and a cargo deck. So in this case, if I have a cargo deck that has a 100 ton capacity or 150 ton capacity, uh, and I can then uh, max out that capacity at that warehouse for this material that, and, and then shut the line down. So when that, sh that large cargo ship shows up or that, that cruise liner shows up and it sticks around for four or five cycles, at, at that point, they I know that they're demanding that to buy this, and they want this particular, let's say they want to buy iron, they want FE, and I got 150 tons on the capital, I bang, sell them that, make a fat profit. The next cycle, the, the five tons that's getting delivered every cycle is not going to, it's going to make a profit, but not that big of a profit. But what I can choose to do is, in that, in, is to send a, another ship over to my mining platform, unload the where you know unload its storage shed you know it's storage uh, uh, cargo bay haul the cargo straight back to the capital and then and then sell it to the mining ship at the, the rate set for the capital which if the, means that the rate set at the capital is much higher than it would have been because if if you had the the 50 tons on the exchange for sale and you sell it you made 25 credits well now you're down to one credit or one ton which if you have it it's worth one you know point ninety nine percent you know ninety nine cents of a credit of a credit so if uh i'm able to bring a hundred tons over now i can sell it for 99 credits versus the 25 credits that i've sold the first batch you see the advantage there if you can swing it and you remember to do it and your math all adds up I mean, the, the mechanics are in, and the, the rules are allow, uh, it allows for it. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One more. One more. Okay. Like a bad Mr. Rogers video. A 67. I suppose that could be far worse than Mr. Rogers. Uh, plutonium. So, plutonium. So, I have 13 individual uh, mineral resources in this one asteroid. So if I was to find a second asteroid that had 10 or 12 more, uh, and preferably 10 or 12 that, uh, that are not on this list, well then, geez, I'd have three quarters of my damn uh, mineral resources in two locations. I would double up and double up on again on it because it just expedites things, moves things, makes things a little quicker and better. And in some cases, if it allows for it or the opportunity comes up, you can exploit it even bigger. So one of my options for doing that uh, is there's actually, the we can actually establish a colony on an asteroid belt or on a big enough asteroid. So we would send our scouts in to find a big enough asteroid or errant and obviously hope for that. The system is still only 10% or 90% unexplored yet. So God knows what's also in the system. Potentially there's a other planet, a breathable planets where we set up a colony there and then we use shuttles instead of a cargo ship to, to move stuff from the mining platform to the to the colony world and if possible build factories right there to make use of the local production or the open mining resources and so on and so forth. You know? Hmm. And just go on and on and on about that crap and go, oh my god, what is he talking about? Okay, so we got all that stuff and so uh you are on all that. And so before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and update that sheet because I otherwise I'll forget to do it and I'll be going out. What? So we know there's an asteroid belt. I, I don't remember if it's an actual belt or what, but we know there's one there because the marks are there. And our MR is going to be just as I rolled it.
That's a hell of a list, I can tell you that much. All right? Okay, so that that's there. And while we're at it, same system. We're gonna have Yeah, we got plenty of supplies on board, so we're going to have our sloop go ahead and scan the system for do another search of the system. So, explore the system. So once again, we go back here, and we're going to go. I was blabbering about earlier about exploring space. So exploring a known solar system. So this is the little side chart we would roll. This avoids having things like once we know the system is safe, we don't want to accidentally discover a uh, a black hole that existed in a system where 90 we've explored 80 percent of the system has got all these great planets and all these opportunities, and we hit, get saddled with a black hole. Uh, no, so that's kind of that's why we use this chart here. It, it reduces that to things you should ought to find in the in the existing system. So 29. 29 is nothing, so I roll 29%. Okay, so that means nothing. Alright, so we will change that to a 20. So we know we've got 20% of the system. Now explore. And we'll change the supplies on both our ships. Right, alright. Put that in there. So, now we gotta do a little bit of clean house. Right? So, change that to six. And so. At least one more, maybe one more cycle in, in uh, exploration for this system, for the sloop, and then the sloop has to go back to Farrowin to resupply. And mining ship just getting here, so it's got a ways to go. Meanwhile, I also have uh, to go ahead and enroll. Uh, is this possible? It's gonna mine. It's gonna fill itself in the first, the first try. With this, with this number of resources available, you know, maybe not. If I keep rolling tiny like that, it's not gonna. Let's see, let's see, two, five, seven, seven, sixteen, twenty-six, twenty-six, forty-one, forty-six, fifty-five, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-one. Yeah, we're not filling it up this trip. We will next trip for sure. Sixty-one, sixty-six. Sixty-six, sixty-seven. It's all these ones, you know. If I had been rolling in the fives in the higher category, we might have been closer to full. All right. 
So I took care of all that and brings us back to the Iron Hunter. And we want the Iron Hunter to go to a different system. That swamp plant is supposed to be in my home system. I don't know. I gotta figure that out. No, Hardmore system's different. Okay. So we're gonna go check out this exotic ice world that has yet to be touched. As it doesn't show, uh, it has three moons. A breathable low It's a breathable world with low pressure, arid, and methane ice. 4% land mass with no naturally occurring oxygen or, or water unless rolled. So what we don't know is uh, mineral resources. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump the Iron Hunter over here and do a repeat so we can figure out what's going on here. So cycle 16 and Iron Hunter to more system and this is going to be planet number two and then we want the MR roll for the planet and so a planet's going to have a D8 but let's make sure huh because you know like I said my, my, my memory and stuff not as good as it once was, not getting better by any means. So we're going to want to keep that chart handy. But we want planetary exploring planets. Uh, we've done that. So non-breathable planets. Uh, number of moons. Exploring planets. It's got to be mining basics. Exploring for mineral resources. All right. So it says planets have a, D, a D10 minus 2 plus oxygen and water unless the planet type says otherwise. So we know that this says there is no naturally occurring O2 or water unless rolled. So it, it does so, uh, it automatically gets oxygen. So it gets to have uh, O. And then we're going to roll a D10 minus two. So the minimum you can get is a one. Right, so there's a 10, 0 is a 10 minus 2, that gives me 8 more. So 8 more rolls and uh, plus the oxygen that's available. At that point, uh, the only way I get water here is it'd be water ice in the form of mineable ice or something like this. So we will find out. Maybe we'll get lucky. 66, it would be a horrifically weird world. Palladium, so PD. And 31 hydrogen. And we get a cracking station over here and produce hydrogen fuel on a regular basis for our, for our starships. 73 radium RA. That was uh, one of those items over there in that asteroid belt we did. Uh, so 16, 69 is platonic. Uh, Plutonium. Out of, uh, yeah, one, two, three, so we need four more. So 48. Magnesium. 26. Galenium. Or however it's pronounced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more. So 20 is Dunearium, so there's no water, there's no O2 on this world, which is, you know, fine. I hurt my feelings, not. Unfortunately, I can't use the, I used the ship's exploration option for, for mining, so I can't explore the surface, uh, which is, is what it is, so we're going to get the MR O. E H R A E O M N G A D B. All right. Okay, so we did that. 
that. Uh, we need to do our logistics here and get everybody, get the ship set up for we used, and we used three tons of fuel and we used one ton of paint consumables and now we're going to mine, we're going to mine oxygen. One PD eight H nine R A ten P O much higher now. Oh, well, I guess I shouldn't have spoke so soon. Much higher numbers until I just opened my mouth. Alright. There's a crappy, poor crappy rolls in a row. Let's try the other one. Nine. And DB. Six. Okay, so we have... 9 is 15, 16, 17, 27, 36, 44, 45. So 45 times the stuff there. That's fine. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now I need to hunt down my two scouts and figure out where they are. I'll kind of mischief they're up to. And there's one of them. So, Camary is sitting over here at Head Hardmore. And I'm still working on exploring this planet, so I have enough supplies on here to do one more roll, I think, of exploration. So uh, we will go ahead and do that. His next cycle, she'll have to go back to the capital and get resupplied. Planet. What the hell are you? You know, we're just going to give it a damn name. We're just going to give it a damn name. I don't know here. We're just going to say Gap. Gapton. Gapton in the Hanmore system. Gapton. Now we just arbitrarily gave the damn thing a name and we're going to do an exploration roll which is going to bring us to 80% of the planet being explored. For the love of Pete, don't get another damn group of people living down there. Jeez. Come on. Right. So we'll get down there and we'll go ahead and update the supply situation. So we are down to one ton of supplies, consumable, one ton of oxygen, water, fuel, and then two, two tons of fuel. So we want to now explore planetary exploration. All right, so which chart do we roll first on? We're gonna roll on 67, so chart three. And we're going to roll 70 on chart 3. Please not be something a whack job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I created the game, and every now and then I, I, I pray for stuff not to be a whack job. Right? And there's something sticky in there. It take, okay, so chance to cycle this. Uh, okay, chart 3, 70. So we get and we get exotically patterned stone. Pattern or Uh, 
could be researched as valuable or unique H housing material which would be HM or construction material which would be CM so basically what they what what that's saying that's saying is that I would need to assign uh, a sample acquire a sample of the stone and then assign that sample of the stone to my research and development facility and uh, run five cycles of, of research on it to get an opportunity to roll on a chart to see if it has any kind of value to it or any exotic properties that we, we don't know about just yet. And if so, in either case, then at that point, the house, then we decide how to exploit it. So it's quite plausible that we could give it a, uh, a uh, ability to so we would just define that this is something that can be quarried for example and we would establish a quote quarry by building a uh, a commercial a ccb a commercial a custom commercial build that would exploit specifically this material and it would become uh, available as a construction material or a housing material but you would then also quantify it in some manner so it would have an additional value so at that point the value may be uh, just that that it's because of its unique colors and, and patterns or something that it, that people high-end people want it in their their structures so you actually there's a formula in there that allows for this and it tells you how much to increase the value of something and also how to increase the, the property value i.e. the tax output that something may be worth that's in, that includes this stuff and there's advantages so it, from a social perspective from uh, uh, other a aspects in there that that can be plugged in too so it just goes to show you and this is that there's so much possibility and this is another yet another thing that uh, once an, another thing that I'm going to have to go and figure the hell out so okay so that's the calamari and okay, now we can go find uh, my other scout wherever the hell it is figure out what that ship's doing sitting back there still All right. Second chance. Ah, here we go. So we are still at Kepit's Folly. This is this other system, other place with a freaking population on it. I need to create the map to give it a little bit of color and make it make it stand out a little bit. So let's take a look. Uh, we have plenty of supplies on board. What's the show? I believe the Xeno Scouts and run an operation. And now I'm going to have to go back and check my notes from cycle 15 because it's possible that I missed it. So I'll check my scout or my records and and see if I if they did. Because if they did, then then the shuttle needs to return to uh, Fairwind, which then means it would have to be uh, hauled over there by the the Jan Kuro. Well, the Jan Kuro can still jump, but. Uh, or still do its uh, search scan so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and adjust its consumables since it's not going to and then we're going to go ahead and explore the system or the planet one more uh, another exploration role and keep it's falling planetary Explore and that will bring this change. I gotta bring this, I gotta update this thing anyway because this is that's no longer right. Yeah, currently, cycle 16 and explored planet is now 60 60 percent explored all right so we're going to explore the planet and that means getting our charts back over to the other charts
military exploration so which one of these are we going to roll on uh, 49 is chart 49 is chart 2 all right so 14 on chart 2 roll one on uh, on one of the other exp planetary exploration charts. All right, so odd is, odd is chart one, uh, even is chart two, or three, so odd is chart one, and we're going to go 23. I think uh, whenever I put those in, it was because I was struggling. I needed to get something in there, and I didn't want to just keep, I, I tried hard not to repeat events very often. There, There's a couple that repeat, uh, but most of them, for the most part, uh, do not. So we're looking at chart one, uh, 83 on chart one. So, exotic fauna discovered. All right. Considered pests are vermin. Pests, they board any ship that arrives and move on to other planets. Think of rats, for example. See, developing worlds, designing flora and fauna. Okay, so at some point I'm going to have to follow up on that and uh, uh, get the research. Go ahead and do a uh, creation on the uh, pests just to see what kind of pests they are. Uh, to see, because pests are pests, but anything can be exploited if there's, you know, look look at uh, tribbles, tribbles from the original Star Trek. I mean, that's a pest by anybody's definition, and an actually dangerous one because they can literally eat you out of your home uh, and, and end up killing all of themselves and you in, in the process from starvation, right? I mean, it's just possible. So anyway, that's that's uh, Jan Kuro, and of course, uh, I don't think I got anything else on do yet. I have to go look and see, uh, like I said, uh, the status of the Xeno Scouts. I, I believe I did do it, but I got to check. And, and then, of course, uh, then there's the, we got to, to follow up on things like, uh, you know, uh, our various agents and other programs, things they're going in play. You know, I, things that get to the point where, like I said before, I started just having individual uh, ones for each one. So instead of having them spread across a dozen different little uh, notepads, you know, we have Fred Dodge, and then we have Kara Carmichael. And then there's whatever else is going on. I don't know that I have any planned follow-ups for the uh, investi or the negotiations and stuff that took place in cycle 15 uh, so we knew some information on some of those now I go back and relook at them for sure and and make sure that uh, somehow we didn't skip anything or if there's something that needs to be followed up on that so we go here so cycle 15 and you know that John Curro. Yeah, see, we already met with that uh, that, that ship's ship's captain, and we also met with the samurai leader. Yeah, chief protector. All right. So we know that the the samurai were not not employed and not looking to be employed, but are sticking around. So I, I want to keep that in my mind because uh, I, I mean sticking around for what? I mean seven seven cycles or until the next freighter or, or, or a passenger liner comes. So my mind is is they came in on one of the passenger liners that just left the system and uh, stuck around. So they may be waiting for another ship to show up so they can get a further ride or whatever but this means that they're available for other events to crop up and or things to be connected to so we you know it's hard to say what's going to come on the pike next numbers and other things like that so we know that one was result it was resolved and we resolved 
we did not I did not figure out what the exam so I missed I missed doing the Xeno Scouts for cycle 15 so I'm going to follow up on that and finish that that way I can define what's going on there uh, the, my Minister of Culture or Commerce and Labor negotiated with the uh, FPC captain didn't get very far with it might be for one new FPC house. Uh, not sure exactly how many jumps away. I have to look into it. Pretty sure I did that, but we'll look into it because I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so that's me. This is you. You're you. I'm me. There's that. Until next time, this long video is finally going to be over with, right?